Hi, I'm Susan Taylor with Scripps Health in San Diego, California. The heart has many different parts to it, and uh, today we're going to talk about the mitral valve, which controls blood flow in the left side of the heart. What happens when that valve leaks and you are too ill, too frail to undergo open heart surgery? Enter a very cool device called the Mitra Clip. So joining us today is Dr. Matthew Price. He is an interventional cardiologist at Scripps Clinic who has implanted more Mitra Clips than any other doctor in San Diego and was actually involved in the clinical trials that eventually led to FDA approval. Thanks so much for being with us. Thank you for having me. So how does this mitral valve work? Yeah, the mitral valve is an important valve. It's the valve that separates the left atrium, which fills with blood from the lungs, and the left ventricle, which is the major pumping chamber of the heart, which pushes blood out to the aorta. So that valve, which is made out of two leaflets, opens when the heart relaxes and closes when the heart squeezes. And, and if you have a, a leaky mitral valve, what happens is when your heart squeezes, instead of blood going forwards, to your brain and your muscles, the blood goes backwards towards the lungs. And if you have a severe leak, that's not a good thing because you can get short of breath, your heart can enlarge, it can get weak, and you could feel tired and, uh, and gain weight, and again, have problems breathing, doing even just very simple tasks. Really restricts your activities. Yes. So what causes it to leak? Well, there's a whole host of things that can go wrong, unfortunately, with the mitral valve. But generally, as we get older, we get degeneration in those leaflets, and they become floppier. And there's these little cords that tether the leaflet down, much like the tethers or the cords of a parachute. And those, over time, can actually snap and cause the leaflets of the mitral valve to flutter and not hold. And when the heart squeezes, blood goes backwards. So several years ago, the only choice was open heart surgery mm -hmm. for this. And, and if you couldn't have open heart surgery, if you were too ill, too frail, then what happened? Well, you were not treated. We try to give medicines, but again, with mitral regurgitation, it's a mechanical problem. So you, medicines can only do so much. So unfortunately, people went into uh, congestive heart failure. Your heart gets weak and doesn't work anymore and you have a, a very poor quality of life, and you can die from, from heart failure. All right, so let's talk about this mitral clip. What is yeah. it? Yeah, the mitral clip's a really neat thing. You said it's a cool device. So the idea is if part of the valve is flopping backwards and not sealing with the other leaflet, what if we just grab the two leaflets and pin them together right where the leak occurs? So instead of going from a single orifice of a valve opening and closing, you go to a double orifice valve. So the part that's leaking connects to the other leaflet and seals it. In fact, it's really interesting. Um, a very smart cardiologist saw a surgeon in Italy doing a procedure instead of with a clip with stitches. And, and it was, his name is Atovio Alfieri. He's from Italy, from Milan. And he said, hey, maybe we can do that with a catheter rather than open heart surgery, and the mitral clip was born, and actually, the mitral clip has better results than that particular type of open heart surgery. So, so let me you, show yeah, you yeah, the actual clip. So this in, is, yeah. Talk about this the is it's a fairly complex device, so this is just the, the clip itself. And I like to say it looks like a clothes pin more than a clip. And, what, and what's really neat is that this clip opens and closes. So first I'm gonna open the clip up here. So we have a little lever, and you see you have a clip with two arms. One of the arms is going to grab what's called the anterior leaflet, and the other arm is going to grab the posterior leaflet. So what I would do is advance this clip through your heart and underneath the leaflets of the mitral valve. And then I would retract the arms just a little bit to make like a little V like that. And I pull back on the clip until the two leaflets rest very nicely in those arms. When I see by a special echocardiogram or ultrasound that I've got both of those leaflets, I'm gonna drop these grippers. It's a lot like fishing. I drop these grippers just like that. I'm gonna do that again, so I'll, I'll go in slow motion. So these, these, these two grippers that come down and basically will now pin the leaflets between the grippers and the arms. And once I've grabbed the leaflets, I've caught the fish, I'm going to retract the arms. 
and grab them. And now I've brought those leaflets together where they're leaking. I do a very comprehensive assessment to make sure it looks fine. Hey, if I don't like it, hey, no big deal. I can just open up the arms and release the leaflets and move my clip or, or grab it again. If I like how it looks, I can release the clip from the cable to which it's attached and leave it behind. And I can put in as many as, as one to four clips in a particular uh, patient in order to reduce that leak so the patient feels better, their heart remodels and gets stronger, the blood pressure in their lungs comes down, and they can hopefully um, regain their quality of life. In a couple of minutes, we're going to talk about who can and who cannot have the mitral clip. So hold that thought for a, a minute. We'll come back to that in just a couple of minutes. This procedure, is this done in the operating room? How is, how is this put in? Yeah, it's not done in the operating room. It's oh. done in what we call the cardiac catheterization laboratory, mm -hmm. the same place that we do coronary stent procedures, PFO closures, all sorts of different procedures. Is the procedures. patient awake the entire time? So it is with general anesthesia. Okay. And the reason for that is not because it's a really invasive, high-risk procedure where we're worried about the blood pressure. It's with general anesthesia because it's guided by something called a transesophageal echocardiogram. Fancy word. It basically means that you have to swallow a little tube that has a camera on it. So it's no fun lying down with a camera down your esophagus for an hour or two. So we knock you out, protect your airway, and you don't remember anything. So, but how does, how do you put it in? Is it through a catheter? Yeah. I mean, you're so, not cracking the yeah, chest how, open, right? Yeah, how do you get this, this big thing into your heart, right? Exactly. So it's the, one of the miracles of modern medicine. So what, what I do is I make a little needle hole in the vein in your groin. And your veins are actually really big down there. No matter how small you are, your veins are big. And I pass a catheter up into your heart into something called the right atrium. I take a little needle and I cross one of the walls of the heart to get to the left atrium. That's the chamber where the left ventricle is. And over a wire, I pass a, a tube up, which contains this clip. And there's um, a bunch of knobs and what we call actuators, where I can control the angle of the clip and how it goes. And I open and close the arms and the grippers and, and um, release the clip. And so, you're seeing this on the monitor all the time. Yeah, I'm seeing this on a combination of x-ray and echocardiography. And so what about recovery time? Yeah, again, one of the miracles of, of modern medicine is in most, if a patient comes in, walks into the hospital for that procedure that day, in general, patients are going home the next day. And that's compared to open heart surgery where patients are staying a week or longer in the hospital and really don't feel like they were before the procedure for at least one month, if not months. So with the mitral clip procedure, patients go home the next day they have very little, very few limitations. I don't like patients to lift heavy things for a few days after the procedure just to protect their groin, but otherwise recovery is very rapid. And how long does this uh, mitral clip last? I mean, once it's implanted, is it there forever? Yeah. Do you have to, you know, keep replacing it? Right, no, it's gonna, it stays there forever. Okay. Um, we have data now for up to five years um, that the results you get seems durable after implantation. So it was first approved in the United States in 2014, I want to say. So we've had it now for three or four years in the United States. It's been around longer in Europe. And what kind of activities can the, the patients resume after they've had this implant? Well, the point is for them to go back to a more active life than they had before, because that's why we're doing the mitra clip. So no restrictions. In fact, they can walk, they can run. Yeah. I mean, I encourage patients to be walk. They should be walking the halls of the hospital the evening of the procedure. That's okay. good. Yes. So, um, they, they should rebound very quickly after the procedure. Um, so we, we talked about the benefits. Are there any drawbacks, uh, to the mitral clip? Well, it is much safer than open heart surgery. And we'll talk about what patients should get the mitral clip, but the mitral clip now is in generally reserved in general reserved for patients who we think are just not good candidates for open heart surgery because of the risk of, of open heart surgery. In fact, the average age of my patients getting a mitral clip is about 83 or 84 years old. Wow. So um, these are patients who in the past would be very worried about operating on um, they, and they wouldn't just do well. The great thing about the mitral clip is patients are going home afterwards. They're not going to a rehab facility. They're not in the hospital for weeks. They're going home to their lives to be better. And that's a really important thing. 
So if you're if they're in their 80s and they're able to go out and walk, they're able to play golf, they're able to get back to a, a higher level of activity right, than before. Right. But we're talking about the risks of the procedure, I think. Mm -hmm. And so although it is much safer than open heart surgery, it's still a, a heart procedure. So there still can be risks. Mm -hmm. I, I quote about a two and a half to three percent risk of major complications from the procedure. Um, but the challenge is that if you do, if you have, if you have severe mitral regurgitation, a severely leaky valve. It's only going to make you feel worse. It's a mechanical problem. So we need to do something to fix it. So people are often between a rock and a hard place. And this is a really great option. So um, we, we talked about it a couple of minutes ago. Um, so let's go back to that thought. Who can and who cannot have the mitral clip? So when someone is being evaluated for mitral clip, it's a fairly comprehensive evaluation. We do a whole host of tests. So we need to make sure first that the patient is anatomically eligible for the clip. So there are certain situations, certain types of mitral valve problems that, are not, that the clip is not a great solution for. That's the exception rather than the rule. We want to make sure that there's not other things going on that are more important than the leaky mitral valve. There are a, a lot of reasons why people can be short of breath. So we need to confirm that the leak is severe and needs to be fixed. We have a heart team approach. So patients see not only me, but they see a cardiac surgeon and often will see a heart failure physician as well, someone who specializes in shortness of breath due to the heart. And we come up together with a decision. Should we operate on this patient? Should we put in a mitral clip? Or maybe they don't need mitral valve therapies at all. And now as, as, um, the, as time goes by, we've had advances. So we're actually now studying replacing the mitral valve with catheters, a, a whole new valve inside your, your heart. So that is reserved for particular patients who are not great mitral clip patients. So what's the goal for your patients? What are your final thoughts? The goal for my patients with a mitral clip is to restore quality of life. I mean, what makes me feel so good about the Magic Clip are the stories I have of, of patients who weren't able to walk their dog, couldn't get their mail, and then they go across the country to see their grandchild or their great-grandkid graduate from college or high school, right? Oh, and those lovely. are the things that make me feel really good. So what's great is I think after the Magic Clip, I get a lot of hugs from my patients, which means a lot to me. <laughs> uh, any final thoughts, Dr. Price? Um, I just, again, it's just really amazing the things that we're doing at, at Scripps Clinic and, and Scripps Health in terms of pushing the boundaries of how we can treat patients with heart problems, with minimally invasive or even non-invasive procedures. So it's really both an exciting place to work and an exciting time to be an interventional cardiologist. Dr. Price, thanks so very much. Thanks for saving lives every day. <laughs> Thank you very much. Scripps is repeatedly ranked by U.S. News & World Report as among the nation's best for heart care. If you would like more information on heart, heart disease and the mitral clip to repair that leaky mitral valve, just click on the link or go to scripps.org forward slash videos. If you want more critical information about your health, please subscribe to our Scripps Health YouTube channel and follow us on social media at Scripps Health. I'm Susan Taylor. Thanks so much for joining us. It's our mission at Scripps to help you heal, enhance, even save your life.